Well, good afternoon from the Oklahoma's Video Studio. I'm Dave Morris. Happy to be joined by U.S. Representative Steve Russell, representing the 5th District here in Oklahoma. Sir, thank you for your time this you afternoon. Bet. This morning, you spent some time uh, slinging coffee at a Starbucks, part of their Behind the Bar program. What was that all about? Well, you know, as I've been home, uh, we've been home since uh, Easter, and I've uh, made it a point to get out to uh, as many businesses and different things all around the district. Uh, there's just a lot of good news stories going on. One of them uh, with Starbucks is their, their veterans initiative. Uh, they had a goal to hire 10,000 veterans, uh, you know, company-wide. Uh, just simply because they make good employees, uh, they have a good future, they're very flexible uh, with veterans and their spouses uh, for employment, you know, as they go from place to place. Uh, and it was just a real honor to go out and try to support some of that and uh, had a lot of fun uh, putting toppings in and, uh, you know, working, <laughs> handing people their coffee through the window. I was about to say, what did they have you do as a barista? Are you full-fledged barista now? Or uh, no, I, I, I got to wear the apron, but, uh, you know, <laughs> thankfully there's people uh, much better trained. Were you working the window? Uh, I, I handed things through the window. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so any feedback from the customers? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I had one lady, you know, she says, is that you? And I said, yeah, that's me. And she says, oh, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm like, we need to clone you, you know. <laughs> so it was, uh, but it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. Well, yeah. during your time here in Oklahoma, you've had, I think, four town halls recently? Uh, yes. In fact, every time uh, that we're home, uh, we make it a point to uh, get to as many places as we can. Uh, we went to Wawoka, uh, we were out in the Choctaw Hare area, uh, we were uh, in the northeast part of town, uh, also uh, downtown. And we try to get to every place that we can uh, in the different breaks, try to hit kind of the, the main, you know, density spots and towns in different places, uh, maybe once a quarter to try to get to every community that we can uh, so that they are, don't just see me once a year, but they, they see me regularly. What were their concerns, and did those concerns differ in the different areas? There were some common threads, um, whether it's rural or whether it's uh, local uh, in, in the city area. Uh, people very much concerned about regulation, a lot of questions on health care. Uh, and then, of course, having the capital city in my district, uh, you get all the state issues uh, that happen. And that comes with the territory. I, I understand that. But it gave me an opportunity, having served in the state legislature, to uh, explain the, you know, the differences of what's uh, under federal control, uh, what's under state control, uh, and, and to try to be able to explain some of those processes. So where they say, hey, Congress, yeah. fix our problems. Uh, you had uh, some things that we were able to uh, help with. For example, I went out to a lot of businesses, um, just hearing about the overregulation. Uh, went to TDK uh, out in Shawnee, great. They, they make most of the magnets uh, that you use every day, you just don't know it. Uh, when you roll down your car window, your magnet was probably made out there uh, that runs those motors. Um, talk to uh, Smith Nephew that makes medical uh, devices where it allows you to go in and, and uh, with the cameras to be able to operate inside. Uh, amazing. Uh, what the workers there do. Uh, we got out to see just a lot of good news stories uh, of great Oklahoma innovative uh, fresh point. Uh, young uh, lady, she figured out a way uh, full of enthusiasm to work with this company to get local producers to take their vegetables and get them to supermarkets in Oklahoma. So Oklahoma producers go into Oklahoma chain grocery stores and uh, a multi-million dollar business, it's helping keep uh, our farms and, uh, and ranches alive uh, so that they actually get something to market and then you can buy it at, at your name brand grocery stores. So there's, there's just a lot of good news stories going on all over the district where we have great jobs here in Oklahoma. You mentioned regulation. Uh, what were you hearing from them as far as their concerns about reg regulation? A lot of re uh, a lot of concerns about the EPA and how they're changing uh, regulations uh, uh, on measurements of this or that when it wasn't a problem for decades and now suddenly through some new rulemaking, uh, which is what I call the fourth branch of government, uh, where now they're making rules that have the impact of law and yet you know, they're hurting companies, they're hurting jobs, they're hurting our ability for people to provide, uh, you know, a, a living for their families. And we, we heard this through every single segment of our economy, didn't matter what it was, every segment. 
uh, that was a common thread. We're talking with U.S. Representative Steve Russell stopping by the studio today. Uh, filing period, let's talk about you here for a second. Filing period is this week. I would assume you will file and run again. Absolutely. Now, uh, we uh, will be back in, in Washington uh, during the filing period. Uh, you know, have to be casting votes and doing our duties there. Uh, but I will have one of my daughters uh, that has graciously uh, uh, accepted to, to file on my behalf and excited about that. Uh, and we're looking forward to continuing to serve the great people of Oklahoma. Has anything surprised you during your service so far? One, it's a real honor to serve. Um, I think some people just assume that all politicians are liars, cheats, and thieves. Uh, and you know, and that, you're here to tell us that they're not. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's uh, it, politics is uh, America's favorite shooting sport. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, we we just make it so. But look, um, people want us to try to solve problems. It's easy to go and and just say no to everything, but that's not gonna get anything done. I think what matters is that uh, we try to do it with integrity. Uh, we work to find the common ground, work on those issues and the things that are out here, let, okay, we agree that we disagree on that, but let's try to get enough that we do agree on that we can solve some problems uh, so that we take care uh, of our uh, jobs, we take care of uh, the important moral issues that we all care about, uh, we take care, uh, you know, that we put tax dollars to the things that really matter, uh, like our uh, schools, our roads, our bridges, uh, infrastructure that we don't mind paying taxes for. We all agree that we should do those things. Let's focus on that and then let's cut the waste, let's cut the nonsense, and let's quit this uh, deficit spending. You probably just touched on it on your answer right there, but what will be some of the focuses over the next, for you over the next couple months? Well, when we return to Washington, uh, we will be focused on the budget in the House, and uh, there will be three different proposals uh, is what it's looking like right now. Under Republican rules in the House, they all have to balance whatever's proposed. So my take is let's get something passed so that we can get appropriation done. That's what matters. And, and then, you know, since these budgets will balance, it's a matter of, of pay down. Uh, and then the fight is to get, a, uh, get the measures done. National defense, huge. Uh, we've got to get this done. The president wants to cut 40,000 more uh, soldiers uh, and uh, Marines from our land component. We're trying to put a stop to that with the Posture Act, so I'm working very hard to prevent that. Uh, we'll also have the national defense authorization that is coming up. Uh, that's 60 percent of our discretionary budget. If we can get these hurdles passed, then, you know, it'll be easier to do some of the others. You optimistic? I am. Uh, my blood types be positive. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of my nature to you know, find a way to get something done rather than sit around and grumble and complain about why it's somebody else's fault. Wear it like a badge, move on, uh, try to get some things solved. I am optimistic. Uh, there's a, a far more that we agree on in some of these aspects. We all believe that we should defend our country, for example. Uh, so let's go with that and find the most judicious way to do that. I think the last time I actually spoke with you on camera was last summer. We had the Southern Republican Leadership Conference here in Oklahoma City, and you came into this studio. You spoke with us, and we caught up with you across the street at that point. At that point, the Republican presidential campaign party was just getting going. Right. Looking at it uh, since then, any idea that we would end up where we're at right now? And your thoughts on where we're at right I now? I don't think there's an American alive uh, that would have predicted the presidential race uh, in either party going uh, in quite the way that it's gone. I mean, uh, if, if you could predict those things, then whatever you're doing, you need to stop and get into financials or something. Sure. You know, go to Vegas or something. Right? Yeah, something. I don't think any of us could have foreseen that. Uh, I, I just, I watch it with interest. Uh, you know, a lot of people have tried to, uh, I had four different campaigns uh, approach me about endorsement. Um, I was honored by that, but I, I stayed out of all of them simply because uh, they're all my voters. Uh, if I pick one, then I'm going to anger somebody else. And I'm not running for president. I am running for uh, re-election for Congress. Uh, you know, so it, it's just, the American people are going to choose. I do hope it is a conservative. Uh, I think that will be very important uh, that we have uh, the right types of justices nominated for the Supreme Court, that we uh, do things that advance uh, a free market economy, uh, and that also uh, 
not just increase our uh, our gross domestic product, but also, you know, let's not waste. Let's not go on some spending spree uh, that, uh, for money that we don't have. Well, now you've led me to two questions. Are you going to endorse anyone? Are you leaning I'm not, towards anyone? Uh, I'm not going to endorse uh, anyone uh, in the presidential race uh, until after the the party has made its choice. Uh, then, obviously, I'll back. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll back that choice, regardless of who it is, because it's in my, you know I, I, no secret that I'm a Republican. I just think it's uh, it's far more important that we get a, a conservative in office uh, because of who is appointed for the uh, uh, department secretaries, agency heads, the type of attitude that'll be taken on regulation, our oil and gas industry here uh, that's so important to Oklahoma. Uh, it matters. Elections matter on all of those things. So. Uh, I will be supporting the conservative candidate because of those policies. And then the second question, from what you've seen so far, would you ever want to run for president? Oh my goodness. Uh, if you would have asked me would I have ever wanted to run for Congress, I would have said, what the heck are you talking about? I, you know, I never envisioned yet, that I would... you're in the political arena right now. I am. I am. Uh, but one thing that I've learned is that you can't ever predict the future. Uh, you don't know what will happen in your life. I'm not running for uh, president. I don't have any ambitions uh, to uh, be the next field marshal of whatever. Uh, I've always looked at my own forward momentum will always create opportunity. Uh, so you should never sit idle, uh, but at the same time, God handed me a great gift as a soldier at 40 years of age. I was able to make a historical mark in history. Um, I'm grateful for that. It's kind of taken the edge off to have to rush out and be somebody. And so what I try to do is go and, and work and serve my country, serve my district here uh, for the people of Oklahoma, and I'm, I'm content with that. We've been chatting with U.S. Representative Steve Russell stopping by today before he heads back to Washington. Final question for you, sir. How do you take your coffee? Uh, you know, I used to take a little cream and sugar before I had it uh, black most of the time in the military, but I'm back to black coffee now. Uh, you know, I've tried to take care of my health uh, much of my adult life, so I've, I've cut out virtually all the sugar and the high fructose uh, corn syrup that's in everything we eat. And, uh, you know, so I'm staying pretty fit. And because of that, I'll, I'll just drink it black. Smart move. Sir, thank you for your time today. Much appreciated. Thank you. It's great being here.